Welcome back to MDL Crochet. This item tutorial is over a dishcloth. Now with dishcloths you need them to be absorbent. You need them to be scrubby. So I used 100% cotton, the peaches and cream, and I used the Red Heart scrubby yarn. And I used a 7.0 millimeter Tunisian cabled hook. Now this is 30 stitches wide by 26 rows high and it averages to eight and a half inches both ways or 22 centimeters and of course you can see the back there's a lot of the scrubby exposed which is going to make it very helpful now if you wanted to make a pot holder you could just take the scrubby out and just make it like this and it could be a pot holder too but remember, if you can like and subscribe to these videos and leave me a comment, I will greatly appreciate it and I will chit chat with you if you want to talk. But with that being said, let's get to it. So as I said, we're going to be making a dish cloth. Now the dish cloth is going to be made using the peaches and cream cotton. It is a medium full weight and it requires, or it suggests, a five millimeter crochet hook. So with Tunisian, we go up two, so that's seven. I'm using a seven. I've got two blues, and then I have an orange. And I also have the scrubby yarn, because we're gonna mix the scrubby yarn into it. But let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna make a chain of 30. So make your slip knot like you normally would, and go ahead and make your normal chain. If you don't know how to make a chain, you make a slip knot, and an easy slip knot for me, and it's fast and simple, is just pin, put it here, pinch it, roll the yarn around, and then roll it above. Take your needle and just go underneath the bottom one and grab the top one, pull through, and twist, and cinch it up. And there's an easy slip knot. And then to make a chain, you just leave your needle in the hook, yarn over, pull it through. And you're going to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and do my chain of 30. And I'll speed it up so you can watch. Twenty nine and thirty. So there's your chain of thirty. And when you lay it flat, you can always tell the right side. You've got your little chains or V's. When you roll it over, you see little links between the V's. Well, with Tunisian, we're going to work in those links or back bumps. So you got your first where your hook is at. We don't do this one obviously so you skip that one and go down rotate and you're going to see your bump and then just pull up a, go through the bump and pull up a loop now the reason we don't go for the through the one where the, the initial loop is coming out of is because that is technically your bump so you got it up so go ahead and work down all the way down pulling up your loops and you should be at 30 when you get done so I'm gonna go ahead and do that there's 29 and here comes number 30 right there so we're pulling up our last stitch now and I counted as I went you don't have to you can count after you're done so you can get to counting I already know I have 30 because I counted it so what you can do is just count it but now we got our 30 so what we're gonna do is you're gonna yarn over 
and chain one. Now what we're about to do is the return pass. So you're going to yarn over and then pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. You're going to do the yarn over and pull through two all the way down to the end to where you only have one loop left on your hook. All right, so I'm pulling through the last few I have. Now I only have one. This row you just completed, that's your foundation row. And that's going to count as row one. So with this pattern that I'm making as I go, is I want it to be different. So what we're going to do, it's called the reverse stitch. So you take your needle, go behind, and you can see the V that we're going to. You have the two posts right there. You get the front which is right here, and then you have the back. We're going to take that back, you flip it over to see the post that you're looking for. And you're going to grab it. You're going to split it up so you can get the back separated. Then you're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. And you're going to do this all the way down. Make sure you get that back post. Just turn your work. Don't stretch your head. Don't stretch your arms. Just turn your work. And just go your it's called the reverse stitch because you're doing the simple stitch backwards on the reverse side of the project. And this is going to create a really cool texture. So we're going to do this all the way down. Or if you get a little bit more experience, what you can do is you can actually just watch your front side. You're going to go under, split your two, just like I just did, and then fold your work and bingo. And you can just go right through that gap again. We're going to do it again slower so you can see it. Split your bars and then shoot right back out the back. That's all it takes. It's actually a very simple stitch. Again, it's just the, re the simple stitch, but you're doing it with the back bar. That is it, because you know you have a front and you have a back. And that's all you're working on is the back post. And that's going to give you a really cool texture to do. Uh, it, I like it a lot. It adds a nice little border as well. And that's what we're making now, is the border for the dish cloth. So let's, I'm going to continue pulling up these loops in the back. And if you need a refresher on the reverse stitch, I, I will go ahead and I'll put a link up for you. And also at the end of this video, there'll be a link for it as well. The, but the reverse stitch is one of the, what I call the base five stitches. Because you need to know the, the base, what I am consider the base five, to do other stitches. If you learn the Tunisian simple stitch, if you learn the knit stitch, the full stitch, the purl stitch, and the reverse stitch, you can do about 90% of those stitches because they're a combination of the two. Just for example, the honeycomb, it's the pearl, and the simple stitch, just alternating. And it's a two row repeat. That's all it is. You could do ribbing that, you could do that with knit and pearl, alternating them. You can do quite a few other stitches if you learn the base five. Now with the simple, uh, with the full stitch, I consider it a base five, a lot of people don't. But with the full stitch, if you learn the full stitch, it teaches you offsets. And there are several stitches that require offsets. All right, I'm pulling up onto the last one right now. And then just take it, you just close off this row and we're gonna do the the close off is going to be on the front side. So you just take your needle, fold it to the row you just closed, fold over, 
and you're going to slide right where you need to go. And this is a prime example right here. Oh, my needle's over here now. Is here's your V that you need to get. But you also see, you can see it right now. You have that back bar, right? I'm trying to split it up again now. It was split up. But you could, there's a back bar right here. And this is the edge of your V. You're trying to go between those two. And this will help. This little trip that tip that I give you, just roll down to the row you closed, fold over, and boom. You're going to split it every time. You pull up your loop, yarn over, chain one. You're always going to yarn over and chain one. And then you're going to yarn over and pull through two all the way down to the end to where you only have one loop left on your hook. Now we're going to go ahead and pull through the last loop. And we're going to do another row of re reverse stitch. And we're going to do a total of three rows of the reverse stitch. And like I said, sometimes it can be a little tricky on this reverse, but just remember to bend the work to you and not you to your work. And once you get more experience with it, it's actually going to start moving a lot faster for you. But remember, you, you working on that back loop, that's the loop we're wanting. We want that back loop. We don't, we don't care about that front one. Leave the front one alone. Because what we're, gonna, we're doing is creating a little ridge. As you can see, texture. And we're creating that texture by just pulling up our stitches a different way. All right. Remember, it's just the back bar you're grabbing and going through. And split, keep that back bar. Yarn over and pull up a loop, and you're going to do that all the way down until we get to the, we got to do the, our edge st stitch. And that edge stitch keeps you nice and clean edge. All right, we're down at the end, so just rotate down to where you just, the row you just closed, fold your work, and pull up a loop. So that's row two done. So yarn over, chain one, yarn over, and pull through two all the way down to the end. All right, I'm pulling through the last two stitches now. All right, you can see the texture it is giving. And that is a beautiful texture. We're gonna do one more row of the reverse stitch. Because we're creating a texture or a, a border for what we're trying to do, right? Oh, that one does not want to. There we go. One more to pull up. And then just, again, take your needle, you roll it down to the row you just closed off, and then fold over, and you're going to end up right where you need to be. Pull up a loop, yarn over, chain one, yarn over, and pull through two. And pull through two all the way down to the end. All right, so we're coming back to the end here. And that's what the reverse stitch actually looks like for projects. It gives a nice texture feeling, a nice textured look. Okay, so we've done three rows of the reverse stitch. And we still have these loops to deal with. So what we're going to do is we're going to create our border. So we're going to do three more reverse stitches. So we're going to go ahead and pull up three more reverse stitches in the color we decided you decided to do for your border. It's two. There goes three. 
and there goes four. Now we're going to change up the stitch. We're going to go in and we're going to do and take our other color and the scrubby yarn. I'm going to marry the two together. I'm going to create my slip knot and I like to do mine this way because I feel that it, it's a more secure route. I know some people don't like doing it this way. They like to just lay the yarn and then weave in the ends. But I feel this is a more secure way of doing this. And we're going to do it as a simple stitch. And we're going to do a simple stitch all the way down with our new two colors. And be sure to grab both of those and of the if you're using the scrubby yarn and the other in regular yarn. And this is in cotton. And we're going to go down until we leave four stitches. Those four stitches though need to be the end stitch and then three inside. So we're going to stop. So this will be one, two, three, and four. So just one more. Now we're stopping. We're going to drop it. We're going to take our last color. And we're going to go ahead and we're doing reverse. So we're going to go back behind. Pull up that last. It's going to be a little tight because you're starting to already work on those full, uh, simple stitches. Go ahead and do your slip knot, pull, pull it tight, and pull it up. And you're going to do two more of those. And now that we just got them to the last, you're going to take your needle, drop it to the row you just closed off, fold over, poke through. Pull up a loop, yarn over, chain one, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. It's going to be a little tight right there, but that'll go away. Yarn over and pull through two. Now we're here, so just drop. Got to get some of that out of the way there. So just drop that color, pick up your other color that and just yarn over and continue pulling through two. It's going to be a little tricky, but it can be done. And then you're going to do that all the way down. And then you can pause for a minute, go back to where you just changed colors and tighten it up a little bit. Clean it up. It doesn't hurt to clean it up as you go. And then just keep yarning over and pulling through two. All right, now we're about to switch colors again. Switch colors and pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Go back to where you switch colors, tighten it up. Like I said, just keep go tighten it as you need to. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do two, do our three more reverse. Go. Two. And three. Drop the color, pick up your other color, and we're doing simple stitches. And what you can do here, is because you can see the knot kind of come through. You can pull it back just a little bit, and it's gone. But hold on to it if you want to. Tighten that one up. There we go. And just pull up your simple stitch. And pull up your simple stitches again all the way down with until you switch. And we're almost where we need to switch again. So go ahead and just drop that yarn, pick up your other color change. 
So you bring your yarn, bring it back, up and kind of keep it above where you need to go. So when you bring your needle and you go in, your needle, the yarn is above your needle. Let go of the yarn. Grab your yarn, and then you can do your reverse stitch. It's going to get a little complicated on this side, just because of that right there. And then the rest will go smooth. Everything's going to be a little tight, but that is fine. Now you drop down. You can do your normal row closure. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, chain one, yarn over, pull through two. And you'll pull through two till you're done with this little section. And your needle doesn't slip off like mine just did. And there you are. Now you drop your that color and you pick up your next color. And you yarn over and you pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Okay, drop and pick up your another color, and then just pull through two till you get to the end, and you only have that one loop left on your hook. Go back to where you change colors, and just tighten it up. And that's how it's coming along. I'm going to go do the rest of the rows off camera, and then we'll be back to finish this up. See you in just a moment. Okay, so I'm going to finish up with the last few stitches here switch in my color that scrubby yarn wanted to come through darn all right, so let's just fix that. And that's going to happen, especially when you're working with multiple strands at once. There we go. Just continue pulling through. All right, so we're going to go ahead and tighten that up. Let's get rid of this. because We're not going to need this anymore because we're done. Just leave a decent tail so you can fix those. Get that out of the way. And then this other one you had over here, we don't need as well. So I'll go ahead and leave a decent tail. So you can tie it off and weave it in. So we're still doing the reverse stitch. But we're going to handle it a little different when we get to this color where the scrubby is. We're going to go ahead and do the simple stitch. And just go ahead and pull up your reverse stitches right here. Remember reverse stitches, we're working on the back post. And now we're here at the color where we would normally do a color change. So what we're going to end up doing is just pick up simple stitches here. Because if we did the reverse stitch here, it would look pretty funny looking. So we need to create our line so we can do the reverse stitches, right? Because you're, you're adding pretty much two lines of thread together. Now go ahead and just fold this one strand you had that you snipped off. Fold it. Fold both of them out of the way because we got to go at an angle to get this. So we need those out of the way. This last one here, I know it's stretched. That is fine. That is 100% fine. Because you can always do this number and it tightens up. Now grab the yarn that you just, that you're working with and pull up your remaining reverse stitches. 
right at the end. So just drop down, poke through, pull up a loop, chain one, yarn over, and pull through two all the way down to the end. Okay, we're at the end. Now this is where we're going to end up doing three full rows of the reverse stitch so that way we can match this. So let's go ahead and do a reverse stitch all the way down. I'm going to finish up the reverse stitch on this row and then do the two more rows and then we'll come back and we'll close the product off, okay? Back in just a moment. Okay, I'm finishing up the last few stitches. Now this is how we're going to close this row off. You have two options you can do. You can do a simple stitch close off, which is just pull up a simple stitch and then just bind off, slip it off. But me, I like to do it in the stitch pattern that we've been doing. That, to me, it continues the continuity of everything. So that is going to be in the reverse stitch. So you just do pull up your reverse stitch. The first one's always a little hard. Pull up your reverse stitch and then just slip it off. And that's exactly what, how you're going to do this. Pull up your reverse stitch and then just slip it right on off. And you're going to do that all the way down to the line until you get to the end. And once we get to the end, we're going to do a different type of closure. All right, we're almost at the end. Just got one more to do. And how we're going to handle this is just dip down, pull up your loop, and cast off your loop. And then I always do one more extra chain because I like to be extra. Snip off your line, pull it, and tighten. Now all you have to do is just weave in your ends, and there is your washcloth. But that is the dishcloth. Remember, if you can like and subscribe to these videos, it would be greatly appreciated. And leave me a comment. I will chit-chat back. And remember, folks, keep stitching. Thank you.